So I'm hearing there, Manny, that your question, tell me if I got this right or not, is what's the purpose of trusts in insurance? Yes. And right. um, did I also hear that you said that uh, what's the repercussion of not having a trust or was it disadvantages of the trust? Was that, was that your question as well? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Where are you in your studies, Manny? Uh, almost completed uh, the unit one of the CMAP, um, starting the unit two. Uh, well, this done, week. well done, well done. And are you planning to, uh, to, to, to recommend life insurance to your customers? Yeah, that is also a plan. I'm mm. trying to uh, get involved with one of the company who are into uh, protection advisory as well. So, nice. Well done. Well done. Okay. Um, well, first of all, you do you do need to 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 recommend life insurance to to customers, and uh, we're doing we're doing um, a live stream this morning on the topic of life insurance. We're we we're, we're sharing with you the concept of um, desired or required, because most people know that um, life insurance is required, but very few people will desire it. And in the current climate where everyone's watching their bank statements, a lot of people will find it difficult to buy something that they don't actually desire. Yeah. They, re they recognize they require it. Like a lot of things, we, we know we need things, don't we? But whether we'll pay for it's another issue. And the issue here is that you need, as, a, as an advisor, to make life assurance desirable to your customer. You need to make it something that, that they really want to have. Um, they see the benefits they, they feel that if they don't have it, it's going to cause them problems and, and therefore they desire it from you. And then you can give them the premium costs, etc. And then they'll compare the premium with their Sky broadband subscription or their, their, their Just Eat Friday night treat. And they'll think, actually, no, if, if we cancel our Friday night takeaway, we can afford life insurance. So that's the key. And to do that, Manny, you have to make life insurance desirable. And one of the things that makes life assurance desirable is putting it into trust. And not a lot of people put it that way. They make it sound all so complicated to the clients and the clients get all confused and it all goes horrible. Now, a trust on its basis. I have put that in uh, trust. On that, not only I thought uh, there is some advantage, but I couldn't be able to figure out what is the exact uh, benefit that somebody is going to get out of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, I understand where you're coming from because the book itself and things are not that clear, are they? Um, the whole point about life insurance, Manny, is that you provide a lump sum of money or, or income in the event of somebody dying. So if you take a look at it visually, then take a look at the concept here visually. You've, you've got somebody who um, has a house, possibly. Um, the house has a mortgage on it. You also have somebody who's got maybe a little kiddies, you know, some little, uh, little um, ankle snappers or, or rug rats, as we call them. And of course, this person, this man or woman, doesn't really matter. Let's put a, put a woman in there who wants to have the cover, has responsibilities. Their income, their salary from employment, whatever, is needed to pay for this mortgage on this home and these little children who need looking after. And the whole point about life assurance, of course, is it provides money in the event of death. So in the event of death, um, in other words, dying, there you go, it provides money which can be used to pay the mortgage and look after the kids. Now that's fine. But say, for example, this lady's on her own. In other words, she's an independent lady and she has children. It happens a lot, you know, it's quite normal. And she's bringing up the children on her own. Now, if she was to die and, you know, you had life insurance and therefore the money pays at this lump sum pays out, that money has got nowhere to go. And that's the key thing here, money. The money that pays out the life insurance company says, OK, I've got the death certificate. Now, where do we pay the money? And. They, they don't know. So they say, well, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll put it into the deceased's estate. Mm. And that's the problem, you see. When people die, they have an estate. There you go. And um, depending on whether they made a will or not, doesn't matter. All of their assets go into their estate. So all of their assets, their liabilities, the mortgage, of course, everything goes into their estate on death. And that estate goes somewhere. Normally, it goes to the next of kin, 
If you've made a will, it goes to wherever you want. So what not the life insurance company would do, if they don't know where to put the money, is they'll put it into the estate. So this, this lump sum of money goes into the person's estate. There you go. And um, that's a problem because nobody can get hold of that money until the estate has been released. And the estate can take months to be released under, under probate rules. Three, six, 12 months it can sometimes take if it's a very complicated estate and there's lawyers involved and there's costs, etc. If there's no will, which a lot of people don't have wills, then it can take even longer. And then the, 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 the government then decides where the money goes. And that's the problem. Meanwhile, of course, these kids start starving because they've got no money to, to, to pay for food. They've got no guardian. Nobody look after them. The house gets repossessed because the mortgage isn't being repaid because the money's stuffed in there. That's the problem. And if people can see that problem, Manny, then they can start to realize where trusts come in. Because trusts are very simple things, really. All they do is they give the life insurance company a signpost, if you like, as your signpost, about where to send the money to. That's all. So when the life insurance company has the money ready to pay, they say, okay, who do we pay this to? They have a look at the trust form and it says, okay, the money goes to the kids. In fact, this one actually goes to um, un Uncle Bob. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob is her, her brother. That's the bro who okay. happens to be the trustee. He's the guy that said, look, if you die, I'll look after your kids for you. This money goes to Bob and the kids there you go so the cash therefore finds its way into bob's pocket because he's the trustee effectively he's the he's he's the um the executive of the will etc it's, it's actually you know for the kids bob gets the money he then looks after the kids he pays off the mortgage he lives in the house of the kids and he's got money in the bank to pay that's done in two to three days and yeah. That, yeah. So basically, it is uh, getting into the estate or going directly to the beneficiaries. What uh, the trust? That's it. Do. Exactly it. Exactly it. Now, okay. this the second benefit of that, man. Just to finish off the story for you, is because this money has gone straight to the beneficiaries. It's no longer in the estate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that reduces the estate for inheritance tax. So you see, putting the life insurance policy into an estate could make the estate really big and therefore have inheritance tax to pay. So uh, that's, that's trust.